I'm going to give you a quick rundown on adding um, RF connectors to uh, USB uh, Wi-Fi devices or any kind of device. Here I've taken apart a, uh, a Linksys Wireless G network card. I think the model number is uh, WUSB54G. Here's the circuit board. It had uh, one screw underneath right here. If you can't figure out how to take it apart, you shouldn't be doing this. Um, the, ne the absolute necessary tools in this is you're going to need some solder, of course. Desoldering braid, usually a must. You're going to need some kind of utility knife. Um, there are two types of, types of wire cutters. These are standard diagonal cutters. These are actually strippers and cutters. There's an adjustable nut on the side that allows you to select the gauge of wire that you want to strip. You want to set this all the way back. Reason being is, here's some LMR 200 coax cable. Now I've already explained on different types of coax cable, no, you cannot use RG8, RG6, or any of that other crap stuff that the satellite, uh, satellite or cable TV guy left behind. Yield what I have said about coax. Anyway, here's LMR 200. If you take these diagonal cutters and you cut it, it's going to pinch that center conductor. If you use these, it's going to cut it in a square instead of pinching it flat. Um, once you actually get some coax and you start cutting it, you'll actually understand what I'm saying. Some kind of needle nose pliers are relatively required. You're going to need some kind of coax crimpers for the coax connector that you're going to be using. Today, we're going to be using an LMR, uh, sorry, a reverse polarity panel mount SMA. What makes it a, 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 a what they call a bulkhead panel mount is the fact that it's got this little screw on it. So you can drill into your, into your object, to your device, and then take this little nut, screw it on, and that's how it's going to affix to the device. And then, of course, we got the crimp collar, and the crimpers have the, um, the appropriate crimpers for the, the, RP, uh, the RPSMA. Here's our little center pin. Now, I'm using LMR200 because LMR200 and LMR400 uh, are the two easiest forms of uh, microwave coax you can get your hands on. Like I've said, I've taken this card apart. Now I'll try to show you, but you see right here, this is your antenna. Look at this rinky ding shit coax. Yeah, it'll work with its built-in antenna, but perhaps you want something a little bit more powerful. Now if you look on this board, can you see how there's a center conductor and then there's the two side conductors for the shield? It's like this coax, like they designed the circuit board so you could fit this on directly. They want, it's like they wanted you to mod this. But if you can't get your hands on, on any kind of uh, LMR cable, you can just crack this antenna open, desolder the antenna, and then solder your little coax to whatever antenna. So if you have a helical or a biquad or whatever antenna, you don't have to go out to a connector. You can literally just glue this entire car to the ass end of, a, of a, any kind of antenna. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove the sides, which are the shield, and the center, which is the um, conductor. By the way, having a soldering gun for the coax is a good idea, and a 35 watt soldering iron for the board, for the actual circuit board. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and start work on this. There we go. With a little bit of brute force, I was able to easily pull that off. Notice the center conductor. That's your signal wire. That's the actual signal of your card and those two outer conductors. These two outer conductors on the sides, that's your shield. Your coax is going to snugly fit in there. It's just a matter of stripping your coax appropriately. So I'm going to go ahead and strip my coax appropriately and uh, pre-tin it with the soldering gun or the iron and then solder it in. Here we have the final, well, halfway final product. Wire is soldered on. Now be very careful because if you put too much pressure on this joint, if you do that, you could break the, the printed board, clear off of the circuit, and then your card's good for shit. So um, this is step one. The second step of, of this, really, and the final step, is putting on the appropriate the appropriate connector which is whatever connector you choose either N, RPSMA, uh, RPTNC as long as the appropriate RF connector and then mounting it in the case. I'm going to go ahead off camera I'm going to go and finish this card up. Now um, if I haven't mentioned that the, um, the coax isn't very flexible so when you're actually trying to figure out where you want to put your uh, 
your connector inside your case. Make sure that your cable will flex into the direction and into the positions that your card, uh, your card fits inside the case. This actually has to bend at a very sharp 90 degree angle and then another 90 degree angle because I want to put the jack and the ass end of the card here. So um, that's going to need a little bit of uh, finessing and finagling. Now, I've been using the soldering gun for the coax and I've been using the, the little iron for the center conductor. Um, at this point, when you actually have the, um, all of this together, I'd run a continuity check between the shield and the center conductor. Also, this is, up here is also considered shield, so you can also, if your shield pads break off, you can also use this RF shield at the top or any point of ground as a shield. But I would use this RF box, this nice RF shield up here. Um, make sure you have a continuity test. Make sure that your signal, con your signal wire isn't actually crossing with your, um, with your shield. Because if it is, your card ain't going to work for shit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and uh, put my connector on and uh, work this thing back together into one usable item. Okay, took a little bit of work, took a little bit of effort, took a little bit of time. Here it is. We have a reverse polarity SMA crimped onto an LMR200 leading into a, uh, a PCB of a Linksys USB G Wi Fi card. I drilled a hole in the case, right about here. Um, honestly, if you're going to get this card, move the hole over a little bit. I made it a little too too close. Now it's just a matter of putting it all back together, and that's it. Uh, getting the appropriate tenon. If you don't have, have a pair of crimpers, crimpers can uh, be a little expensive. You can go and get a socket bit, an everyday metric socket bit, and make it get one that's uh, that'll fit slightly over the top of your coax. Cut it and cut it down the middle, bisect it in two. And then using a pair of pliers, you can use to crimp this. Uh, Amateur Logic, episode 12, I believe. Either 12 or 13. I'm pretty sure it was 12. Check out their show notes. And I did a segment on how to do that, so I'm not going to cover it here. I'll just go ahead and link to the show notes in that. I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, back together and show you the absolute final product. Here we have the final product. It links this guard. USB. Reverse polarity SMA. From here, you can go to whatever antenna you'd like. Um... This also goes for practically any device that already has a built-in antenna. You can go and get a video scanner or another Wi-Fi card or a Bluetooth. If it's got a fold-up antenna, if it has an antenna of any kind whatsoever, um, like one of these, you can modify it so it has a radio connector. There you go. Fuck off.